Hello everyone, I'm Vivian C. I'm a faculty member in the ECS department and I'm going to talk to you about energy efficient AI. Uh, so today, uh, most of the processing that's being done for AI happens in the cloud. Um, but there's many compelling reasons why we want to move it out of the cloud into the edge and process it locally on your device. So the first thing is communication. So if we really want AI to be used by or accessible to many people across the world, we need to reduce the dependency on the communication infrastructure, so bring it directly to the person. Uh, we saw this morning also there's a lot of applications of AI in the healthcare space, so privacy is also really important in terms of the type of data that we're collecting. So again, maybe you want to keep the data on the actual local device to preserve privacy. And then finally, there's a lot of applications that involve you know, interactions with the real world and where uh, you don't want to have a slow response time. So a typical example of this would be self-driving cars. So imagine if your car is going very fast on the highway and you're trying to avoid a collision. You might not have time to send the data all the way to the cloud, wait for it to be processed, and then push it back out to, to the car itself. Right? So latency is another reason why we want to do the processing at the edge. Um, but there are challenges involving moving this computing to the edge itself, primarily power consumption. So for example, if we take the self-driving car as an example again, so self-driving cars consume over 1,000 or 2,000 watts for the, just the computing power to just crunch the data of all the sensors that it's collecting. So that's a challenge. And then if we think about moving this compute onto a smaller device, so let's say a handheld device like your phone or these smaller robots, the power challenges are even more stringent. So for example, on these small devices, you have very limited uh, battery capacity because of the size and the weight of the device. So you can't have too much energy there. And then also, if we take a look at the existing embedded processors out there, currently con they consume an order of magnitude more power than what is allowed on these handheld devices. So typically, on these handheld devices, you can only afford about a watt of computational power. Uh, so if we take a look, and if we think about how we have dealt with this over the past few decades, typically what we would do is we would just wait for Moore's Law and Denard scaling to give us you know, faster, smaller, and more efficient transistors. Uh, but this trend has really slowed down over the past decade, so we need to think of something else. This is not going to be a solution that will you know, carry us forward. Uh, so in our group, primarily what we've been looking at is how do we deliver energy-efficient AI through cross-layer design all the way across the stack. So what does that mean? Uh, the first thing is we want to develop new algorithms that are energy-efficient. So we really want to think about the energy consumption of the algorithm in addition to the accuracy of the algorithm and how these algorithms might map onto hardware. The second thing we need to do is we need to build more specialized hardware and kind of redesign the computers from the ground up, really targeting AI. So this means new compute architectures and new circuits. Um, and then finally, it's really important to kind of think about how this compute hardware would be integrated into an actual system. So both the sensing or actuation if you're a robot are also important. So you want a holistic solution in terms of reducing energy consumption. Uh, so now I'll tell you a little bit about a couple of the projects that we've been working on. So the first is uh, we've worked on building efficient hardware for deep neural networks. So if you're familiar with deep neural nets, it's used for a wide range of AI applications today. It delivers state-of-the-art uh, accuracy, so people are very excited about that. Um, in terms of developing specialized hardware for it, what we actually really focused on was reducing the cost of data movement. So as it turns out, it's not really the computation, like doing the multiplies or as that's really expensive, but it's how you move the data from the memory to the compute engines, which is consuming a lot of energy. And so we really designed a specialized hardware named Iris that focuses on minimizing this data movement so we can drop the energy consumption. So as a result, we can do tasks like image classification, which is a core task in computer vision, in under a third of a watt. And, it, and in the end, if you compare it to existing mobile GPUs, it's an order of magnitude lower in terms of energy consumption. OK, so then another project that we've been working on, this is in collaboration with Sirtesh Karaman, who is a roboticist in the Aero Astro department here at MIT. We've been looking at how do you do autonomous navigations for these very small drones, you know, about the size of a quarter. Uh, in aut autonomous navigation, one of the key things that you have to do before you can actually navigate is figure out you know, where you actually are in the world, so that's localization. So you can see here in the image, we're getting a video stream, and then on the most right-hand side, you can see we're trying to estimate the position in the 3D world. And that's the very first, this localization is the key step um, in autonomous navigation. And with this chip Navion that we developed together through the co-design of both the algorithms and the hardware, we're able to do this processing in under a tenth of, the watt, tenth of a watt, so around uh, 24 milliwatts. And so where can this actually be used? Well, actually, there's a whole class of low-energy robotics out there which take 
less than a watt to do actuation. So for example, you can imagine these lighter than air vehicles that can be used for air quality monitoring or miniature satellites that you could use for deep space exploration or origami and foldable robots that you can use for medical applications. So all of these robots take very little energy to actuate and interact with the real world. And so it's really important that the computation is also very low power. Um, another example that I want to talk about um, is some work that I'm doing with Thomas Helt from, in the Institute of Medical Engineering and Sciences here at MIT. Um, and really what we're focusing on is looking at the role of energy efficient AI in the healthcare space. In particular, we're looking at the monitoring of the progression of neurodegenerative diseases, uh, which currently affects more than 50 million people worldwide. Uh, one of the ways in which people are assessed for dementia, let's say, is that they have to go into the clinic and talk to a specialist. Um, and they're asked a series of questions. And the issue with this is, first of all, it's very expensive to do this. Uh, it's very time consuming, so people can only go maybe once or twice a year at most. And then third, it's also in a very qualitative and subjective assessment. So for example, different specialists might have different uh, conclusions in terms of you know, their evaluation. And even the specialists themselves, it, the repeatability in terms of their testing might vary. Uh, what's been really exciting is that recently it's been shown that there is some correlation between eye movement and these types of diseases. And so if you can measure the eye movement, eye movement will give you a much more quantitative uh, evaluation of the state of the person's uh, mind or the disease progression or regression. And this could be useful in terms of evaluating whether or not a drug is working. Um, but again, the challenge right now with these eye movement assessments is they have to go into the clinic to do it. It takes really expensive cameras, um, and it's quite inconvenient. And so with Thomas, what we're looking at is whether or not we can integrate uh, the eye movement tests onto a smartphone itself. Uh, so then you can bring it into the home. It'll be very low cost, and you can do frequent measurements. And this would be a good complement to the uh, specialist assessment. Um, so in summary, oh, and so also for this, it's really important to do the processing on the device, because obviously it's medical information. Uh, so in summary, I think you know, energy efficient AI is really important. It really allows AI to extend its reach beyond the cloud. What it enables us to do is you can reduce your reliance on the communication network. You can enable privacy. Um, you have lower latency. And so you can use AI for a broad set of applications from robotics to healthcare. Um, and in order to enable energy efficient AI, what's really important is you need to have kind of cross layer design from algorithms all the way down to specialized hardware. And to do that by having specialized hardware, we really believe this will enable the progress of AI over the next uh, decade or so. Thank you very much.